Hi, I'm Scott from the Rio Grande Tech Team, and today I'm going to show you a few different methods for creating rings within ZBrush. So let's get started. Okay, so we got ZBrush booted up, and the first one I'm going to show you is actually a plugin. Uh, now, if you have uh, ZBrush 2020, uh, this will come installed already on on your uh, installation. Uh, it will have a different name though. The plugin is it used to be called Ring Master. It is now called Ring Utility. And if you have ZBrush 2021, uh, you will have to download this separately, but it is worth it because there's some really nice features in it. If you go to uh, pixelogic.com slash ZBrush slash download center slash Z plugins, uh, you can download the Ring Utility plugin as it's now called. Uh, and when you download this, it will uh, have a document folder on how to install it. It's very easy, uh, literally just taking a couple files and dragging them into the right folder. To navigate to this, uh, you'll go to your Z plugin menu and locate the Ring Utility plugin here. Now, the nice part about this is it will make us a base band uh, with some very simple options. So we have our ring size here. Uh, we can input whatever we want. Let's make a size 10. So I'm just clicking into the number, keying it in and hitting enter. The thickness, typically with a ring, um, I don't go more than about two millimeters thick. Uh, it gets a bit uncomfortable to wear, starts to intrude on the other fingers. Uh, but anywhere between 1.5 and 2 millimeters is a good thickness. So I'm going to do 2 millimeters. And for width, uh, this will be mainly a design consideration. Uh, I'm actually just going to key in 5. Uh, so we're going to make a size 10, 2 millimeters thick, and 5 millimeters wide. Now, there are a few other options within this Ring Utility plugin. Uh, you can click on the More Options tab to bring those up. Um, things like creating separate polygroups, increasing, which will keep your corners nice and uh, sharp when you're subdividing, uh, mirror polygrouping for uh, you know keeping symmetry and things like that. Um, so there are a few other options to, to play with in here. Uh, and once you're ready, you can click uh, Create Ring Base Mesh. So I'm going to click on that, and there we go. Now we have a ring that we can start sculpting on. Now, one thing I want to draw attention to is if we navigate over to our subtool palette and expand it, you'll notice we have three subtools in here, two of which are hidden. Now, what these are, these will generate whenever you're creating this ring. And what it's actually doing is creating a ring mandrel. Uh, so if I unhide this, um, this ring mandrel has been sized to a certain size to make sure that this ring is going to be the proper ring size. And then the uh, bounding box around it, which um, I believe helps with the thickness of the ring. Uh, but these both will be hidden by default when you make this ring. One of the nice parts about the ring utility is it, it works really well if you're going to be using something like the Z Modeler brush. So let's take a look at the geometry of it. So I'm going to turn on polyframes. And you can see it's very, very simple. Uh, we're only at about 256 polys just for the ring. So if you're using something like Z Modeler, this is actually a really good place to start. And you can see we had creasing turned on. So you can see creasing has been applied to these corners. So yeah, that's a, a very quick and dirty way of just creating a straight band. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's just flat on top. Uh, really no frills, but it's uh, just a quick way to add in a, a ring of a certain size. Uh, and that way you don't have to go through the normal sizing operations, which uh, we'll actually be going through with uh, the, next, the next ring that we're going to make. Now, another reason why I recommend downloading this Ring Utility plugin is because 
uh, not only can we create rings, uh, there are gemstones in here as well. Uh, click on the Z plugin menu, go back to my ring utility plugin, and under gemstones, we can click to expand that. And you can see we have a number of gemstones that we can start with. So uh, round, some fancy shapes, uh, even a custom shape if you're using like, a, like an IMM brush. Under dimension, we can set the millimeter diameter of the stone. And we can choose to have it on the band and how many we want to have on the band, uh, along with their orientation with the top, middle, and bottom. So this is a handy way of, of generating a stone really quickly. So if I want to do a one carat, so we'll key in 6.5 millimeters. Um, and I'm just going to bring in the one stone. So I'm going to turn the on band option off and then click add gemstone subtool. And that will actually add a gemstone to our selection. I'll turn off polyframes here. And now I can start using that to actually build uh, a setting, like a bezel setting or a, a you know, four-prong head or whatever I want. So uh, even just generating a stone when needed, it's, it's nice to have something like this because it's uh, just very quick and you can set it to a, a certain size. So that's, a, that's another nice part about the Ring Utility plugin uh, to have. And there are a few other options. Uh, things like mandrels, uh, you really won't be messing with these too often. Uh, but generating quick rings and gemstones, it's a, it's a nice tool to have. So just, uh, just in case you need it. Okay, so, so that was pretty much the Ring Utility plugin. Incredibly simple, uh, easy to use, and yeah, great if you're going to be using ZModeler. Uh, or you can just start subdividing this and, and go from there. But let's go on to the, the next way uh, we're going to make rings. Because right now, this will only make straight, flat bands. And we could apply some deformers to that. Uh, but I'm going to show you a different method. So let's actually get a new document here. So I'm going to go up to Document and go to New Document. So the first thing we need to bring out is we need a cylinder. So I'm going to select the cylinder 3D and I'm going to left click and drag and immediately hit the T key to go into edit mode. Now this is going to be our ring mandrel. So the first thing I want to do is I want to size it. So in order to size it, I need to do one thing first. I need to make this a polymesh 3D. So we'll go ahead and click the make polymesh 3D button there. I need to navigate to the geometry palette and go to the size submenu. Now, as, I was, as I've explained in other videos before, um, when you bring in a subtool, it'll always have the same dimensions, uh, two by two by two. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to size this to the internal diameter of the ring size we want to make. Now, I'm actually using uh, the ring chart at uh, RioGrande.com. We have a uh, article about uh, how to cut the proper amount of stock to make a ring. Uh, just as a side note, with a handy little calculator that is super, super nice. But this is what I'm going to be using right here. So, so we have our ring sizes. Uh, we have circumference and diameter here. And... Uh, let's do let's do a size seven. So size seven is right here. My internal diameter is going to be seventeen point three five. So I'm going to go to X Y Z and key that in seventeen point three five, and zoom out because I just made it a lot bigger. And sometimes you'll see it kind of jump back like that. Uh, I'm just going to key it in again. There we go. Make sure that we've got the right size there. Now I'm going to click on the move option to bring my gizmo out. And I'm going to grab the scale in Y 
rectangle, this little green rectangle, and just kind of bring this up just a bit. Uh, we're actually going to be making the ring on top of this surface, so I'm just kind of expanding this to give myself a bit of extra room. Uh, go back into draw mode. And now I want to add some subdivisions to this, and uh, we're going to be using masking to uh, make our ring. So I want to have some decent subdivisions. I want to have a really nice, crisp mask if I can. Uh, it'll make cleanup much easier down the road. So I'm just going to click Subdivide. Uh, and I'm going to bring it up to, I'm up to about 2 million polys. Um, yeah, I want that surface as smooth as possible. The first thing we need to do is we need to activate symmetry. So to activate symmetry, go to your transform menu and activate symmetry button is right here. Go ahead and turn that on. And I need it in the Y axis. So I'm going to select Y and I'm going to deselect the X axis. So we've got something like this. And now I need to change my masking brush. So I'm going to hold control and it defaults to the mask pen. I'm going to select mask curve. And you'll see it already changes my stroke modifier to curve. Because I'll show you what we're going to do here. Uh, right now, I'm on the model and you can see I've got my two points here. I'm going to estimate about what the width is going to be at the bottom. And I'm going to slightly move my cursor off of the, the model here still holding control uh, and I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to bring it out at a bit of an angle uh, because we're going to make a kind of tapered ring so uh, I'm going to drag it all the way across the model and then off of the model again and then release and we'll give that a set to calculate and there we go now I don't need this so I'm actually going to hold control and I'm going to go back to my mask pen and I'm going to turn up my draw size uh, so I'm going to hit S on my keyboard bring the draw size up and then hold control and mask that portion off so we're left with something like this now what we're going to do is we're actually going to extract this surface from this cylinder uh, and the way we do that is by navigating to the subtool palette and it's the uh, menu down here at the bottom extract now with the extract function it's not actually going to extract the unmasked areas it's going to extract the masked areas so I need to reverse this so I'm off my model I'm gonna hold control and click and that will reverse my mask. And now we need to actually extract this from the surface. Now we've only got a few options here. Um, so we actually want to turn both of these off. Uh, T borders is used in other things. We're not going to really be using it for this demonstration. And double, double will actually extract in both directions. So once we extract this ring, it if we leave double on, it will extract this uh, outward as well as inward. And we don't want that because uh, this cylinder has been sized to our ring size, so we don't want it to actually extrude inside of it. Uh, that, would, that would mess with our ring size. Now, one downside to the extraction tool, uh, as nice as it is, the thickness you want to extract is not going to correspond to your size here. So I wouldn't be able to key in say uh, 1.5 mil or 1.5 and it extracts 1.5 millimeters. Uh, but uh, you can actually just measure it after the fact. Uh, if you do a, I'm going to click in here under thickness and I'm going to do 0.12 and hit enter, uh, that will extract a about a 1.5 millimeter thickness uh, and if I do uh, 0.15 that will be about a two millimeter thickness so 
uh, your, your rings are always going to be in that range between 0.12 and 0.15. And if you really want to get exact with it, uh, just do an extraction, take a quick measurement. Uh, if it's not what you want, you can always redo it. So, so I'm going to deselect double here. And once you're ready, uh, just click the extract button. And there we go. Now, uh, if you want to inspect this ring, you may have already tried to turn the screen and notice that the ring simply vanished. So that's because if you want to accept the extraction, you actually you have to hit the accept button before you start moving the screen or it'll disappear. Uh, so I'm going to hit extract again uh, to bring that ring out. And then I'm going to click accept. And there we go. And it's actually extracted it as a separate subtool. So I can hide my mandrel. And it's still got the masking on it. So I'm going to, off the model, I'm going to hold control and click and drag to clear that mask. And, and there we go. Now I have a uh, tapered ring shank that I can start sculpting on. Um, before we continue, I want you to get in the habit of turning on polyframes when you do something like this and take a look at the geometry. So as you can see, we have a very smooth surface right here uh, because our cylinder was up to two million polys and that surface actually transferred to the top of this ring. But if we look on the sides, and I'm going to zoom in here really close, these are all stretched quads. There's not a lot we can do with that. As I'm sure you've already noticed, we have these ridges all over the surface, which we would need to smooth out. Now, because we just have these stretched quads, we're going to need to remesh this. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to navigate to the geometry palette, and I'm going to go into Z Remesher. Now, Z Remesher is going to uh, adhere to this shape as much as possible and, and reorient the geometry all around it. So uh, one, one last look, high geometry, low geometry. And if I just click the Z Remesher button and we'll just give that a sec to run, you can see the progress bar up here at the top. Uh, it's usually pretty quick. It usually doesn't take too long. There we go. So, so now if I turn on polyframes, you can see I have a much more even surface over the entire ring. But you'll also notice that I still have some of this uh, kind of ridges there, that kind of stepping. So in that situation, I would probably navigate down to the deformation palette. And I'm going to do a polish crisp edges. So I'm going to click on this little button to open that up. And then I'm going to drag this to about four. And there we go. That took care of it. Uh, usually you don't need too much. Um, but it kind of rounded off the corners pretty nice. We're down to about 14,000 polys with this. So we have a, a nice smooth surface. It's very low poly. Uh, so now we can we can start adding more subdivisions and and start sculpting. So so yeah, that's kind of a quick way to do uh, something that's not necessarily just a flat straight band. But that's not all we can do with this technique. So. Let's actually go back. I'm going to get rid of this extraction and I'm going to show you another method. Uh, you know, throw in a few tricks. So I've got my ring selected. I'm going to bring my mandrel back out. Uh, and I'm going to delete my ring. Uh, I can turn off polyframes now. So I've got my cylinder back out. Uh, I'm going to click and drag off to the side to clear that mask. I'm going to hold control and make sure that my mask curve 
is selected. And we still got symmetry on, so we're, we're still good there. So we're going to start uh, pretty much the same way. We're going to kind of estimate the thickness and then drag our cursor off, hold control, left click and drag. But right now, this is just a straight line. Now, I've still got control held. If I tap the Alt button, you can see it adds a bit of a curve. Tap it again, and I can get more of a curved line. And then I drag it off the model and release. So again, uh, I'm going to hold Control, go back into my mask pen, and then hold Control while I'm remasking that area. So you can see now I've got more of a curved surface rather than a straight surface. So, uh, so yeah, as you're dragging out this mask curve line, you can just tap Alt and it will create a curve in that area and you can, you can add as many as you want. Uh, and then I would just go back into the extract tool. Uh, remember, we need to reverse our mask because it will only extract the masked areas. So hold control and click to reverse those. And all my settings are still the same. So I can just click extract and then click accept. And I'll click on the eye to turn off my mandrel here. And then click and uh, hold control, click and drag to clear the mask. And the cleanup process would be the same. As you can see, it, uh, it's going to be the same thing, just these stretched quads around the outside edge. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you try something like a smooth brush, it's just not going to ever get rid of them. You can see that I'm holding smooth and I'm trying to smooth them as much as I can, but it just never really gets rid of them. So uh, you would want to do something like a, like a Z remesh uh, and then uh, maybe a polished crisp edges and and go from there. So yeah, that's a uh, that's another thing you can do. And see, so you get this nice little curved edge uh, just as a as a good starting point. Okay, now I want to show you one more thing uh, with this method that we can do. So again, I'm going to click on the eye to bring my mandrel back in. Make sure that my ring is selected. And I'm going to hit delete. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to clear out a spot on here, and I'm actually going to draw what my ring is going to look like. I'm going to hold Control. Uh, I've got my mass pen selected, so that's good. But I'm going to go into the stroke modifier, and I'm going to do drag rectangle. I'm going to hold Control, left click and drag. And before I release, I'm going to hit, I'm going to press and hold Alt, and that will clear my mask in this area. So now um, I can actually just draw directly on the surface what I want that ring to be like. Now I'm going to turn symmetry on for the other side as well. Uh, let's see, is that the Z? Yes, it is. So I need to go back to my freehand mode for my masking. So I'm going to hold Control go back into my stroke modifiers and just do freehand and draw size is a little big so I'm going to turn that down just a bit and now I can hold control and just do something fun and right now I'm just kinda kinda freehanding it but you know maybe maybe something like that and then add something like that, something in here, who knows. So, so now I can actually extract this, but before I do, I want you to take a look at something because we, we did our masking over here and you can see it's nice and crisp and clean. And over here, it's kind of blurry. Uh, to sharpen that up, you can navigate to the uh, masking palette on the right side here and click uh, sharpen mask maybe click it a couple times and there we go now we have a much cleaner mask 
that we can we can bring out and you can always use something like your uh, you know if I hold control and, and I'm drawing a mask I can also hold alt and get rid of some of that mask and again I would just want to click sharpen mask a bit and whoop, forgot to hold alt there we go and just kind of clean up some areas uh, make sure everything is exactly the way I want it and then extract uh, same process as before just go in to your subtools uh, click extract it extracts it as another subtool you'll probably have to z-remesh uh, and then you can start adding subdivisions and then making these bits more sculpted um, and the nice part is you can do this for the entire ring shank if you want. So you can bring out one of these cylinders and just draw the ring design with using uh, using your symmetry uh, or without if you want something more asymmetrical uh, and draw the entire ring design right here on the cylinder and extract it out. And then you, the mandrel will stay in the background as your sizing mandrel. So so yeah, that's a that's a really uh, really good way of doing some really interesting ring designs really quickly and then you can start sculpting them and adding you know stones or whatever bits you want uh, and and take it from there okay so the last one we're gonna look at is uh, a pretty a pretty simple method of just using some of the primitives that we have available so I'm going to go to document. I'm going to bring out a new document. And I'm going to navigate to our tool palette. And I'm just going to bring out a sphere. So left click and drag. The T key to go into edit. And click make polymesh 3D. So we're actually going to be using the uh, live Boolean system for this one. So the sphere is going to be our ring. So the next thing I need to do is I need to bring out a mandrel. So I'm going to click append in the subtool palette and find our cylinder 3D. Here we go. And I'm going to select it. And I'm going to use a gizmo to turn it on its side and hold shift to turn it about 90 degrees and now I'm going to kind of scale it in a bit oops I need to make it a bit longer so I'm going to do the uh, scale Y this little green rectangle just click and drag to bring that out uh, and that will be our ring mantle as I scale this you can either kind of eyeball your thickness or use the transpose line. Uh, in an earlier video, we, we demonstrated how to use the transpose line to actually measure uh, very specific areas of your model. So you could actually use the transpose line to measure how thick this, this ring is going to be. Uh, for this demonstration, we're just going to eyeball it. So I'm going to do something like that. Now you can see we've already got a bit of our, you can already see what this ring is going to look like. Now I need to add some subdivisions to this because um, it is pretty blocky at the moment. Uh, but since we're doing a Boolean, uh, I'm just going to turn on dynamic subdivisions. So I'm going to navigate to the geometry palette and find the dynamic subdiv and I'm just going to turn it on. Uh, I don't need to click apply, I can just leave it where it's at. Uh, and I'm going to navigate back to the subtool menu uh, and set the cylinder to boolean subtraction and on the sphere I'm going to hit the uh, arrow here because that's where the boolean is going to start. And now I can turn on the live boolean system and see what this ring is going to look like. And after seeing it like this, I might actually, I uh, still got my gizmo on, I still have the cylinder selected, so I can make some small adjustments here. 
Now you'll see that right now this band is extremely wide and these edges are extremely sharp. Uh, so what we would actually do is we would go in and kind of clip these. Uh, I'll show you that here in a sec. Uh, but I need to, I'm going to go ahead and just add some subdivisions to my sphere here. So I'm going to click on uh, the sphere to select it, click on geometry, palette, and then you know, just maybe hit it a couple times, something like that, just to get you know, better representation. If you want to leave this ring nice and wide, uh, you will be clipping it on the side to give it a bit of a, a flat edge. Here, I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. So go back to the subtool palette. We've already set up our Boolean. Uh, and if you're if you're wondering about booleans, uh, we do have a video about that, so uh, be sure to go check it out uh, to get a more in-depth view. Uh, so in the subtool palette, I'm going to click on the boolean menu here, and the cylinder that we used uh, had dynamic subdivisions activated. So I'm going to turn on uh, allow dynamic subdiv here in the boolean menu, and then I'm going to click make boolean mesh our new piece has been populated here in the tool palette and I can go ahead and click on that. So we need to get rid of these sharp edges here. So I'm going to go into the gizmo by clicking the move button. And when I grab this scale Z here, I'm going to hold control while I do it just to kind of clean up those edges and then I'm going to do that on both sides. So, so yeah, now we've eliminated that, that sharp edge there, created a little bit of a flat edge, but now we have this ring that is not flat on top like ring utility does. Uh, we have a nice little, nice little radius going here. And we can actually control that. So, so if I go back into my uh, ring from earlier. So here's my my sphere, my cylinder. So I can take the sphere, go into my gizmo, and I'm not going to hold control to clip, I'm just going to click on it. Now I can get a much more, much taller radius, well not really taller, but uh, a more you know half round type of radius. Uh, just by adjusting the dimensions of the sphere. So if I turn off the live boolean and I hide my cylinder here, you can see I'm just taking the sphere and just kind of squishing it in a little bit to uh, change that that radius. So yeah, and this is uh, pretty much the same as before. Uh, I would just make sure that since my cylinder is using dynamic subdivisions, uh, I would want to just make sure to have this activated. If you're if you're only subdividing your cylinder, you don't have to worry about this. This is only if you're bullying with something that has dynamic subdivisions. Uh, and then click Make Boolean Mesh. And now we have our Boolean ring. And then I would just use the gizmo to clip it, uh, same way as we did before. So. I'm going to hold control while I adjust this. Uh, we'll come to about right there. Why not? And then to about right there or so. So now we have some, you know, a nice little flat edge here, uh, but we do have more of a domed look on top as well. And that was just a, a quick Boolean. Uh, with a few primitives to throw this together really quickly. Now, the only thing about this method is uh, if we go to our sizing in our geometry palette, you can see the size is it's bringing this in as a standard size of a uh, ZBrush subtool. So it's about uh, two units by two units by 0.4. So it would be two by two by 0.4. So 
So you would want to append in a cylinder and size the cylinder to your ring size. And then you would scale this ring up to fit on your uh, ring size. Uh, and real quick, I'm gonna I'm I'm actually going to demonstrate that because I want to show you uh, one thing to be aware of when you're when you're scaling things up to a certain size. So I'm gonna go ahead and in my subtool palette, I'm going to append in our cylinder. And okay, I need to rotate this. So make sure that that's selected. Go into my gizmo, click and drag on the outside edge and hold shift. And now that is ready to go. Now I need to size it. So I'm going to go back into the geometry palette. And the ring size that we were working with earlier was a size 7. Uh, and that was uh, internal diameter of 17.35. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and turn on dynamic subdivisions for this, uh, just so we have a bit smoother surface. So I'm going to key in, in the size menu here, I'm going to key in our 17.35 and hit enter. And we blew this way up, so I'm going to zoom out a bit. And now I need to scale up my ring that I made. So I'm going to select it. And uh, just a quick tip, uh, because right now we can't actually see the ring. Uh, over here, if you click on uh, transparent mode, or it says activate edit opacity, uh, so click on that. Now it will kind of ghost that cylinder so we can actually see our, our ring. And I'll just grab the yellow circle in the middle here and kind of line this up as best I can. And then I can turn off transparent mode and hide my mandrel if I need to. So now we've actually scaled this up to a proper size seven. So let me show you one thing that uh, that could get you in trouble, and it's just something to be aware of. Uh, so let's say I'm going to be doing some real sculpting on this. So I'm going to go into our brushes. Uh, so I'm going to hit the B key, and I want to bring out the Move brush. So I'm going to hit M and then V. Now. If you want to grab large swaths of this ring and manipulate it, you can see my, my draw size is pretty small at the moment. So I'm going to hit the S key and I'm going to drag my draw size up. So you can see my draw size is maxed out right now at about a thousand. And this may not be big enough for your, your needs. Um, now, the, the easy way to get around that is to disable the dynamic draw size. Um, and just a quick refresher, dynamic draw size will keep your draw size the same size on your model. So if I, if I actually zoom out, then my draw size is the same on the model. Even when I zoom in, it stays the same size. Uh, dynamic draw size will we'll keep that kind of locked into a certain size. But if I, under draw size here, if I double click on dynamic uh, and then bring my draw size down, you can see I can get a lot bigger uh, than I would with it on. But if you zoom in or out, you can see the draw size, regardless of how zoomed in I am, it's not changing. Um, so if you're, if you're going to turn dynamic draw size off, just be careful not to zoom in or out. Because at that point, you will change the draw size of your, uh, of your brush. And if you're sculpting with the same size in different areas, and you accidentally zoom in, getting that same size is going to be tricky. 
So just make sure uh, to keep that in mind. Uh, if you if you size things up first, then you could get into some issues where you you can't get your draw size big enough, and you're only you have to turn off uh, dynamic draw size. Uh, so in some instances. <clears throat> it's actually better to uh, go ahead and bring in, you know, make your ring, have your mandrel there, uh, leave it as the default size that ZBrush uh, brings them in at, uh, do all your sculpting and manipulating on your ring, and then at the end, do what we just did, and uh, select your ring mandrel, size it to a certain size, and then scale your ring up to fit around that mandrel. So that's a that's a good way of doing it to where you can you can keep dynamic draw size on, uh, which makes it easier to sculpt. It's it's very easy to zoom in without even thinking about it when you have dynamic draw size off, uh, and then getting it the right size is very very difficult. So that's pretty much it. That's uh, just a few very quick and simple ways, uh, along with just a few tricks uh, for creating rings in ZBrush and keeping them the, the size that you want. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.